Good morning and welcome to our service here at Emmanuel Church. Our service is on the sheets for those who are in church and will be on the screen for those at home. <coughs> Excuse me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So really good to, uh, to be here among you. I've been away for a few weeks, so it's good to be back uh, with you. And today we have a baptism, we have a baptism of uh, Mary Bell, and uh, we're glad to welcome the Oboma family uh, on this special day, not only in the child's life, but hopefully in the life of the whole family. Our service begins with our first hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, whenever we come before God, we are mindful of the fact that we are sinful people. Uh, we get things wrong, and we let ourselves and God and people around us down. So let us take a brief moment to call to mind times when we have fallen short of what we expect of ourselves and what God expects of us. And having done that, let us say the confession together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
as those who have been forgiven by God, we're going to hear our Gloria. special prayer for today, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to have our two readings, the first reading from Joshua, followed by the reading from Ephesians. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 1 to 2, and verse 14 to 18. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sheshem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your ancestors. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are willing to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out people before us, all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 6, reading from verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle 
is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the enemies, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of this, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that I, when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, uh, Evangelist John and Evangelist Comfort, for those wonderful readings. We're going to uh, sing, or have sung, sung to us, I Take My Life and Let It Be, to lead us into our gospel and sermon. Take my life and let it be. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Please stand. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. 
When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you wish, also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One from God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Welcome today. So glad to have you all here. Um, I brought something special. So this is a seed loaf from the market in Forest Gate that happens on Saturdays. Anyone who would like to have a slice is welcome to come up at any point and grab one. I'm just going to put it on the altar over here. So feel free to help yourselves. Our sermon today is going to be about how God uses the flesh in order to illustrate greater spiritual truths. Because we read today just in the gospel that Jesus himself says the flesh is nothing. So when we look at these illustrations and he uses the flesh again and again, he calls himself the bread in our Ephesians reading, he talks about the armor of God and the spirit with a sword, we know that there's something bigger going on here. His disciples had a hard time hearing that he was bread and that they were supposed to eat him because they were thinking, well, does he mean cannibalism? Am I supposed to eat his flesh? This is not an okay thing. This is a physical thing. But our God is a God of action, and he wants us to think in the terms of action. In Joshua, before he actually asks the Israelites to choose. God speaks, and he gives a long, long list of what God has done for the Israelites. He talks about how he takes their father Abraham. He talks about how he assigns the hill country. He gives it to Jacob and Esau. He talks about how he sends Moses and Aaron. But the interesting thing about that, and why it's so important when he tells us at the end to fear the Lord and to make a choice, is that while God does these actions, he also invites us to participate with him in his actions. So when we look at those things that they're saying, they're saying, look, God's done all of these things. He's invited these people to do all of these things, and now we're being called to make a choice. Again, that's an action. We're being called to serve another action. We're being called to throw away our foreign gods. And they're all physical actions, but they're a spiritual mirror that we can understand the things we can't see and touch and taste by using the things we can see and touch and taste in order to understand them better. So what I want to do now is give you kind of an idea of how that works. So in Ephesians, we were told to put on the armor of God, to take up the whole armor, to stand firm. Again, these are all actions that God is inviting us to do. We can use that physical understanding of what it means to pick up that armor and to put it on or to pick up that sword and to hold it. But if we don't take it one step further, we fail to understand where that spiritual reality comes from. So when God says, okay, take your armor, hold it, put it on, stand firm. If you have physical armor, it's very, very heavy. It's not going to be very easy to move around. We can see this in 1 Samuel when Saul 
and David are together, and David says, I'll fight Goliath, I can do this thing. And Saul goes, well, you're not going to do it without armor because he's going to eat you. And David goes, okay, sure. So Saul takes him to his tent, and he says, Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk. Now, when you talk about bronze, it is not a light metal, especially the way it would have been in that time period, because it's going to be very heavy. And David, who was a shepherd at that point, he knew how to use his staff, he knew how to use his sling, but he had never trained with that armor. It was extraordinarily heavy. He couldn't even walk in it. And when we then look at the armor of God that Paul talks about in Ephesians, it's that same illustration. If we don't pick it up and put it on and learn to train with it daily, then when we need it, we're not going to be able to stand. We're going to get exhausted so quickly that we'll fall just because we can't bear the weight of it. Same thing with the sword. You might pick up a sword and generally know that the pointy end goes into the other guy, but if you meet someone who knows how to use that sword and who's trained with it every day, they'll disarm you so quickly that you won't even understand how your sword ended up on the other side of the row. We see this as well in Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. I won't read you the whole thing with that one because it's a bit long. But we can see that there's a spiritual battle going on as Jesus is tempted with, by Satan. First thing that he does is return with a thrust of the sword. Jesus references Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Satan, thinking, I know what you're doing. I've got a sword too. I know how to use it. Returns with a Bible verse, Deuteronomy 6, verse 16. Doesn't work. Jesus returns and finishes Satan with Deuteronomy 6, verse 13. That's a very good example of a spiritual fight. But again, if you don't know what's in the word, if you don't know how to use that sword, then when the enemy comes against you who does know the word and knows how to twist it and to use it to his own ends, you're left defenseless. The same is true with the example of the bread. Jesus tells us to come and eat him, but it's not a physical thing. If it were, then we would have run out of salvation a long time ago because his body's already been buried. And let's be fair, God's very against cannibalism, so we know that's not what Jesus is saying. But there are different ways that we can consume food. We use the image of the bread, but when you read the word, which is what Jesus says his bread is, do you eat it like junk food? Do you eat it really fast and it goes in and then out really quickly? Does it go in one ear, out the other, and you don't get any nutritional value for it? Or is it like a fine meal where you sit and you take small bites and you savor the flavor and you chew it long enough to really get all of the nutrients out of it and you swallow it and you enjoy the flavor and you just take your time with that meal. Because how we treat the Bible and how we treat the things that we do, we need to actually be able to do that action. I, at the beginning of my sermon here, put the bread down and invited anyone who wanted to to come up and to eat it. That's an action that I invited you to that was physical. But nobody so far has taken me up on it. And all too often, it becomes really easy to have this bread and to put this bread on a shelf and think, I'm getting nourished. But if you don't get up and you don't Take the bread, your body receives no nourishment from it. And it's the same with your spiritual life. If you don't get up and take the word, which is the bread for our spirit, and you don't learn to meditate on it, to chew it, to savor it, then your spiritual body is getting no nourishment. It's that kind of thing that leads to a death that lasts for eternity. And he's right, the physical body, as much as it seems like it's the most urgent, crazy thing that we have to pay attention to, is not going to be what leads us to spiritual eternity. That is Christ, and this is what he's given us to feed that soul, to feed that spirit, to gain that eternal life. 
This is the most precious, precious gift that God has ever given us. So this week, when you go out and you think you take a piece of bread or you eat a crisp or you walk by McDonald's, think of this. Every time you encounter food this week, think of this and think, did I take a verse to chew on today? It doesn't have to be you read the whole thing cover to cover. You don't have to memorize every last piece of it. Just pick one verse. Chew on it all week. Let that nourishment seep into your body because that spiritual truth will have an effect even on your physical body. God is so amazing that way. Today we have our wonderful baptism with little, little Mirabelle who's so sweet there sleeping. This is an action that she's taking that God's invited us to take, and it's a wonderful thing that you are all doing to put forward, to take that action, and to commit yourselves to say, our family too is going to serve the Lord, just like Joshua. And God is inviting each and every one of you today to say, I've given you my bread. Take it, eat it, be nourished by it. Let it fill your soul and change your life, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the spiritual bread that gives you eternal life. And without this, well, we don't look much like God when we're dead. So my, my plea, my cry, my call, cherish this and feed it to your soul every day, even if it's just one verse, because there are few things in our lives that can be more effective and wonderful than the word of God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Somebody feels like applauding there, so why don't we do that? <laughs> uh, for those who are new to our church, it's uh, Stephanie's uh, first time of preaching, so we thank God for, for his blessings uh, to us through the words that uh, he's given to Stephanie today. We've come now to the point uh, uh, for baptism. Uh, this part of the service is going to be led by our sister, Reverend Ajeni. Um, should we invite the family to come over to that side? So please, uh, fam- the baptism family, if you just get up and move over to that side of the church, um, where Reverend Ajeni is going, and just follow from where they are. Start from that side. In the long way. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith are baptized on the understanding that they are brought up as Christians within the family of the church. As they grow up, they need the help and encouragement of that family so that they learn to be faithful in public worship and private prayer, to live by trust in God, and come to the confirmation, parents and godparents, the the child who you have brought for baptism depend chiefly on you for the help and encouragement they need. Are you willing to give it to them by your prayers, by your example, and by your teaching? Parents and godparents. I am willing. Those who bring children to be baptized must affirm their allegiance to Christ and to their rejection of all that is evil. 
It is your duty to bring up these children to fight against evil and to follow Christ. Therefore, I ask these questions, which you must answer for yourself and for this child. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan. We thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water that your servants who are washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection to be cleansed and delivered from sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to bring them to new faith in the family of your church and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life for all might, majesty, and authority and power are yours now and forever. Amen. You have brought this child to baptize. You must now declare before God and his church the Christian faith with which they are to be baptized and in which you will help them to grow. You must answer for yourself, selves, and for this child. Do you believe and trust in the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who I gives lives to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is for the congregation. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Marabella Oganini Ochuko Munachiso Obama. I baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. a little bit into that little thing.
Maribel, I sign you with the sign of the cross. With the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be afraid to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin and the world and the devil and continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. Amen. Amen. You're going to say it. You say receive this candle. Mirabella, receive this candle. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Oh. Amen. Move back over there. If you come to the front with me. Parents and godparents. Hold on. Hold on, I'm going to. Parents and godparents. Marabella, God has received, received you by baptism into his church. Turn around. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same family, Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. can put it out and keep it for her. We give God thanks for the baptism of uh, uh, Mary Bella and uh, a chance to welcome her into God's family. Um, I think there were different versions of the names that we are saying, so we are hoping that as time goes on, we will get to know how to say the name properly, especially the first name. But we're now going to have our intercession, which John will bring to us. Morning, church. And brothers and sisters, let's quiet ourselves and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to pray in intercession for your world and in supplication for your church. We thank you, O Lord, for all that you do for each of us today and every day, as well as for this opportunity to come together to worship you and celebrate in a baptism, to learn of your way and pray together in agreement. We lift up to you, O Lord, every blessing you have poured out upon us as praise to your glory. Lord, we thank you for Emmanuel Church, Forest Gate. We pray that you will continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon each of us until we are overflowing with your Holy Spirit, Father. We pray that you will bless this church family and guide us all in that which we do. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Blessed Father, we pray for our parish of Forest Gate. Watch over and care for all of those that make this their place for home, for work, 
and for worshiping you. Watch over and bless each of us in all of our endeavors. Bring us help and blessings at this time, O Lord. Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Gracious Lord, we pray for the poor, for the homeless, the jobless, for those sleeping rough, and those who are living hand to mouth, especially for those known to us here at Emmanuel Church. We pray, O Lord, that you will bless them, and you will send your angels to watch over them and care for them. We pray that you will bring them shelter, food, warmth, opportunities for work, and remind them of your eternal love for them. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and grow in them a deep love for you. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Merciful Father, we pray for the ill, the infirm, for those suffering from stress, burnout, and from mental illnesses. We pray for those who have become ill from COVID-19, and especially those who have been affected by the Delta variant. We pray for those who are in hospital, namely those known to us here at Emmanuel Church. We pray for those who have been pushed to the extreme of mental and emotional distress. And we thank you, Lord, for being compassionate and being the one to restore us when we are ill. Pour out your healing, Lord, on those who are in need. Restore their health and allow them to live. We thank you, Father, for we know that all of your promises are made yes and amen through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Loving Lord, we pray for those who are under oppression, who live in fear, and those under tyranny, be them here or across the world. We pray for those who are fleeing for safety from Afghanistan at this time. Allow your light of salvation to fall upon them and give them hope. Let your love flow on them and your angels minister to them. Bring them out of the hands of the enemy and into your loving grace. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world and those suffering from the effects of climate change. Be with the people of Haiti as they come out from under the devastation of the earthquake. Those in Canada who are suffering and in Europe that are suffering from the effects of wildfires. Watch over all of your children who are suffering due to the ravages of our world's climate and weather. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. O loving Father, we pray for all those who are coming to you at this time. Father, we pray for all those who are coming to you today to be baptized as Mirabel was, and all those across the world who are today, this week, and in the coming days, to know you and join in your family, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be here, to be a part of that family for Mirabel, and to be a part of the greater family worldwide for all those who come to be baptized in your name. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amazing Father, we pray for your church. Pray for it here in Newham, in London, and throughout the UK, as well as across the whole of the world. Raise up our brothers and sisters to your glory, Lord. Bless them, care for them, enrich them in their ministries, and grow them in their callings. We pray that you will help your church evangelize to as many across the world as we can. For we know from your word that you do not want a single soul to be lost. Enrich us, O Lord, so that we here and our brothers and sisters abroad will work to your glory. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Heavenly Father, we pray for our leaders and leaders throughout the world. We pray that you will pour your wisdom, love, and grace upon them, that you will guide and minister to them to follow the path that you would see them take. We pray for our counselors, our mayor, our members of parliament. We pray for our prime minister, the cabinet, and the government that it forms. Lead them, O Lord, in your wisdom and grace. Guide them on how best to handle each situation that is coming before them that seems more devastating than the last. Lord, we pray your love continue to flow on to the leaders of nations and that you will continue to bind them together in your way. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Gracious Lord, we pray for our clergy. We pray for our vicar, 
Reverend Canon Dr. Chihor Chike, for Reverend Zajeni and Obi, for Father Barnabas and Reverend Christopher. We pray, O Lord, that you will continue to guide them, bless them in their ministries and leadership, and in all that they do at Emmanuel Church, for our community, and for your church. Father, we thank you and pray for our Bishop of Chelmsford, Dr. Guli Francis Dekani, and our Archbishops, Justin Welby and Stephen Cottrell. We pray that you will continue to bless them in their leadership, their work, and their ministries, Lord. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Wondrous Lord, we pray for our monarch, Queen Elizabeth and her family. We pray that you keep them safe and healthy during this time. Watch over them and have your wisdom and blessings be upon them and any advice that they provide to Parliament and the government be inspired by your Holy Spirit. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist John, for those prayers. Please stand for the peace. Sisters and brothers, we are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we have been baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we share the peace um, by waving still. So just standing where we are, just wave to the people around us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And when you've done that, please be seated. service continues on our sheets and for those following us at home on your screens. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night Jesus gave up himself for us, he took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we say the bold prince together. Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us in the likeness of Christ, 
and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we know that some people still follow us from home, those who still don't feel comfortable coming to church, or are not able to come for one reason or another. So, If you are following us uh, from home, please say this prayer with me. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you in the building, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Uh, For the communion, what we normally do for those who are here for the first time is we kind of file in a single file to the middle of the church. I try to keep social distancing. Uh, So we file in the middle of the church. There may be people uh, assisting. So just let people know when they can come forward. Uh, if you normally receive communion in your own church, if this is not your normal church, if you normally receive bread and wine in your own church, you are welcome to receive here. So I uh, do come forward to receive bread and wine. Just bread, actually. <laughs> come on.
Let us pray to give thanks for what we have received. The prayer is on our sheets uh, towards the back. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We've come to the time for notices. So let me uh, just start by saying how uh, wonderful it is for me to be uh, back here uh, with you all. I took a couple of weeks off uh, and at the end of it, actually contacted the uh, coronavirus. Um, but thanks be to God, I had been doubly vaccinated. So I only had mild symptoms. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this is really to use it as an opportunity to say to anyone who has not been vaccinated, if you are allowed to vaccinate, obviously those who are under 16, I'm not sure they can, but if you're an adult and you have not been vaccinated, please go and have yourself vaccinated because it makes an awful lot of difference. I think that's partly why um, I only had mild symptoms because I had already been doubly vaccinated. Um, of course, the main reason is because God was there uh, keeping me and my family safe. Uh, so this is also a chance to thank God that I was able to make a full recovery. Um, there are one or two other things that um, we'll, I'd like to bring to people's attention. Those of you who are in the ministry team, sometime this week we're going to have a meeting just to you know, make sure we are all singing from the same hymn sheet, as they say, um, and think about things we're going to be doing uh, in September and in the autumn. Obviously, the morning prayer here in church continues uh, every morning at 8.30 on Zoom. And uh, if you want to join us for that, uh, you can speak to me or one of my colleagues and we'll give you the details of how to do that. Now, we, um, some of you might know about the relationship we have with St. Peter's in Kogoshal. So they have uh, a new vicar, uh, somebody called Heike, uh, who is really keen for that relationship to be restarted. It's sort of gone a little bit quiet uh, after the, uh, the uh, vicar, uh, Chris, moved on, but they've contacted us and they want that uh, relationship sort of rekindled and reinvigorated. Um, I'm going to ask Ellie to come and say something about that and then we can take it from there. Um, yes, we've been invited to go to Cogshaw Church for their church service next next Sunday, Sunday the 29th of August, um, to meet their new vicar and to participate in the church service and to view the flower festival after the service. It's a wonderful thing they have annually. I don't think it happened last year, but it's a truly wonderful event. And then a buffet lunch in a local home and garden. So Cogshaw is a really pretty village in, in Essex. And uh, it would be nice if a few people could go and celebrate with them. Um, we don't have many drivers. So at the moment, it's just me and my tiny little car and a Jenny who can take three people. I can take three people. And if there are any drivers who would like to offer their services, we can take more. But um, I've got a sheet. That if you want to come, just sign your name. And we'd be leaving from this church at around 9 o'clock, 9.15 and returning about three o'clock after a nice buffet lunch. Okay, and the, can I give another notice? Um, following on from uh, the uh, notification about the Climate Sunday service, September the 19th, um, if you have any um, parts of the world that you have connections with and would like us to pray for them, and you know that they're being particularly affected by um, various climate change issues. Um, I mentioned that I have a connection with Dominica, and often it's the countries that don't have the infrastructure to cope with the things that are coming their way. Um, I've left a signing up sheet at the door, 
um, just to put your name and then any um, people you would like us to pray for so that we can start to bring our concerns as a church and also acknowledge that we have many areas of the world where we have friends and relatives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellie. Um, because I wasn't here last week, so I kind of missed taking part in the climate um, climate change service. Uh, but I, I followed it on the at home on my screen on, on Facebook, and I, th I thought it went really well. Uh, for those who went here last Sunday, just to let you know that as a church, uh, we have committed to uh, help to to highlight the dangers and the risks of climate change. It's a massive, massive issue. Uh, for us as a human species, which if we don't do anything about, there is no doubt about it, we are going to be wiped out uh, of this earth. Um, but thank God that many countries are beginning to uh, get their energy behind it, and a lot of churches uh, right across this country and around the world are beginning to get behind it. If you want to just have, it, just have information, if there is a bit of this that you don't know about, uh, you can, of course, speak to uh, Ellie. Um, or Marjorie, who is also in church, and they can tell you about um, what you can do personally or what we are doing as a church. Are there any other notices? No? Okay. Are there birthdays or anniversaries? Or anybody going away or, or returning? No? Okay. Just to say again, uh, somebody coming forward, okay. Oh, you're going to Jamaica, okay. We're going next Monday. Ah, oh, okay, let's pray for you. This is Julia. Julia has the wonderful blessing of being able to go to Jamaica from time to time. This <laughs> is a sad moment. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Okay, let's, let's pray for Julia. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our sister Julia, and uh, we just pray that, that you look after her as she um, travels to Jamaica. Father, you know why she's traveling. We pray that you keep her safe, that you give her a good stay, and help her um, to you know, play whatever part that she needs to play. Uh, give her a good reception as she gets back uh, to Jamaica. And when she finishes, Lord, we pray that you will bring her back safely here. But we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julia. And hope you have a good stay. So we've come to the end, uh, towards the end of our service. Um, let me just say once again, congratulations to Maribel on her uh, baptism. And, um, and, and to the parents and the godparents. Yes. Some of you may not know this, but baptism is the most important, things, most important thing that we do as Christians, more than any other thing, because that is when somebody is actually brought in to become part of God's family. So congratulations for her and to the parents and godparents. And I pray that God will help you to play your part in helping her to grow in the faith as you have uh, promised today. Please stand for the blessing. Sisters and brothers, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn is, O Worship the King, O Glorious Above. Please be seated as we hear our final song.
Jessica, uh, that song is so wonderful, one of my favorite songs, uh, reminds us that, um, you know, while angels are singing glories to God, those of us who are uh, humble creations, we are still doing our best in giving our own uh, adoration. May not be as wonderful as those of the angels, but it's still all that we have to offer. So thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for singing these songs to us. Uh, unfortunately, we still can't sing in church uh, collectively. But isn't it wonderful that we have people who can sing to us uh, in such ways? And thank you for Matthew, who played for us today, and everybody else who took part. Thank you for your words today, Stephanie, and Jenny for leading the baptism. And all the other people who helped out, John, for your prayers, and um, a former who has been on the technical, and those who did the readings. Brothers and sisters, the final greeting, final dismissal, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.